glad to be back with you again on Earth Power. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Bold commitments across different sectors were unveiled during the just concluded Global Climate Action Summit in San Francisco. I was one of Climate Change Media Partnership Fellows, supported by Internews Earth Journalism Network and the Stanley Foundation, who attended this summit. One of the issues addressed was the key technical and financing barriers to strengthen investment in climate-friendly projects. So today on the program, we'll focus on the financial opportunities now available to cities to meet the climate needs. Do stay with us. This isn't how Angulu Atudu would normally leave his house in Lokoja, central Nigeria. But heavy rains have left him no choice. It's the first time he's been able to return home after rising flood waters forced him and his family to flee. The water start to come this month. So tomorrow time now you begin to come from our backyard. It go dry, it go dry, no dry. This of the of the last week, water comes to my, my entire house all pack us up to this date. I know get to pray to go. You see, where the colors go, very, very far from this side. Now they now they now they they no get food, no nothing. All my family they suffer. See, now make me come back to look water for my house. Uh, the forest I did not come. My people see they there. Nothing, nothing for them now. Heavy rains across central and southern Nigeria have killed more than one hundred people in ten states. Kogi, Niger, Anambra and Delta are among the worst heat states, with thousands being forced from their homes. The water was coming. We were thinking that maybe it was just an ordinary rainwater. So we didn't even think that maybe the water would come like this, you understand? So we just like the first room, the, enter, uh, the water entered the first room. We thought it was a joke. Then it when, when the water came to my own room, that was when we knew that yes, the water was, is very serious, you understand? So everybody just like pack because even some people don't have, even have where to go. Just like me. I don't have where to go, but I just like, let me just cut with some of my friends in uh, Felele. Although the degree and seriousness of flooding in Nigeria fluctuates, flooding remains a recurring phenomenon in most parts of the country. Experts say although human factor may be responsible for the floodings, the major factor aggravating it is climate change, which has been shown to contribute to more extreme storms and rainfall. Climate experts say thousands of people die each year from worsening storms and floods, heat waves, droughts and wildfires. These impacts, they say, disproportionately affect the poor, the disadvantaged and the vulnerable. It is evident that climate change is a threat to all humanity and we have been told it can only be solved by a global cooperative effort. This was the message at the end of the Global Climate Action Summit, which held during the second week of September in San Francisco. Under the Paris Agreement, the global community agreed to confront the climate crisis by keeping the rise in global temperature well below 2 degrees Celsius and pursuing efforts to limit it to 1.5 degrees, as delivering this future requires collaborative action at all levels in all sectors of the society. Over 500 commitments were made at the Global Climate Action Summit. Throughout the world, we are witnessing a great turning inwards. It's happening at exactly the worst time. We're faced with two great challenges, the challenge of climate change and the challenge of ensuring multilateralism, a system that has been the bedrock of peace for almost three quarters of a century, remains our guide forward. Today's summit represents a clear and undeniable statement that not only will we work together to address climate change, but that far from an abandoning multilateralism, we will build on it. It's a clear declaration that those gathered here are stepping up action to put us on track for a climate safe, healthy world for all. I want you to know that we have heard you loud and clear. 
this, this summit will help us achieve our collective goal to boost ambition that we need to address climate change. We must increase climate action and create unstoppable momentum towards COP24 in Poland and the Secretary General's 2019 Climate Summit. Let us build upon the incredible enthusiasm and commitment that we have witnessed here by embracing what I call inclusive multilateralism, one that recognizes the need for more voices at the table, not fewer. To help cities in meeting these challenges, the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy and the European Investment Bank partnered to accelerate urban climate action, and they launched the Global Climate Cities Challenge. This is expected to strengthen technical preparation and financing for cities in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. This is a holistic uh, 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 initiative which is open to municipalities, municipal companies, utilities and financial intermediaries. And in the first pilot phase, the challenge will result uh, in the selection of a number of entities which will receive advice to finalize the design and improve the quality of their projects, access to EIB experience in providing innovative urban climate financing solutions, access to knowledge sharing and visibility through the EIB and the Global Covenant of Mayors Networks, in addition, of course, to the funding, which uh, will, be, will be part of that. According to the report Climate Finance for Cities, the way in which cities develop over the coming decades will play a major role in determining the success of climate change mitigation efforts and the degree to which climate change impacts those at risk. Yet, most cities in the developing world face severe barriers to planning and financing the infrastructure investments necessary to steer their growth in a climate-compatible way. International public climate finance is a fraction of total financial flows, but has the potential to play a pivotal role in helping municipal governments and other urban actors overcome the many barriers they face. On its part, the International Development Finance Club which is a coalition of development banks with the aim of finding solutions to meet the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement target, says it will soon surpass the $100 billion target for climate finance. By September in New York, uh, we will report on our, our climate financing and we doubled it uh, since COP21. It was $100 billion at that time and we will probably surpass $200 billion in 2017. So the signal was heard and the second announcement, Mr. Mayor, is that we, we launch today, we release uh, the partnership between the C40 and uh, IDFC, so um, the largest cities and their public financiers. And the idea is really to go from planning to building, so implementing urban plans, financing them, reinforce capacities, especially financial capacities within municipalities, and spur national governments together <laughs> to set the, the proper policies. The financial community has taken important steps forward to tackle climate change and to accelerate the greening finance. Private capital flow are now being directed towards low carbon projects, transition risk management, and green infrastructures. These experts believe incentivizes the financial sector to better account for environmental and social risk in the long term and also brings a response to market demand. Today we release uh, the partnership between the C40 and uh, IDFC, so um, the largest cities and their public financiers. And the idea is really to go from planning to building, so implementing urban plans, financing them, reinforce capacities, especially financial capacities within municipalities, and spur national governments together <laughs> to set the, the proper policies. As climate change creates huge ecological and economic damage, more and more money is being given to at-risk countries to help them prevent it and adapt to its effects. By 2020, this funding will reach over $100 billion annually. But according to Transparency International's findings, poorly governed climate finance can be diverted into private bank accounts and vanity projects, often leading to damaging effects. 
And by the time they trickle down to... Speaking at a session tagged, Local Climate Solutions Financing the Transition, the Cross River State Commissioner for Climate Change and Forestry asked donors to give funds directly to the state rather than the federal government in order to accelerate climate action in Nigeria. The action doesn't happen in the government offices in the central government. The action happens in the states and regions, and we are the actors. So let the financial institutions step up their own commitment, and I know they are willing to do that. And as they step up, let them also make it possible for us at the regional and sub-national uh, levels to be able to assess the funds direct directly. Uh, for this meeting, what I want us to take back with us is that the narrative should change. Let the narrative change from bureaucracy to practical action. And let the funds be placed in the hands of those who are the actors. And as the funds are placed, let uh, organizations and alliances like the GCF and the Under Two Coalition be, in a, be placed in a position to help us with capacity building, provide capacity for us to assess these funds, provide capacity for us to be able to manage these funds and uh, know what to do because we know where exactly we want to direct the funds. On its part, the mayor of Quito says low carbon projects continue to be delayed due to technical capacity barriers to access private investment. I think we all agree that it will be impossible for countries to meet their NDCs and their Paris Agreement goals without a very active role from cities. And in order for cities to do that, they need resources. So the biggest challenge that not only Quito, but I would say that most cities in the world face right now is how to f uh, access to those resources in a much, a much more fast and direct way. Um, and <clears throat> what really worries me is the fact that uh, very frequently uh, that depends on uh, each country's political scenario. If a mayor does not have a good relationship with the national government, it might be extremely difficult for that mayor to have access to, let's say, international developing financing because very frequently you need a national guarantee that you might not be able to get because of that political scenario. So how can we overcome that? And uh, the answer is, I think we have to go further into uh, redesigning this whole uh, financing architecture for climate change action at the city level. Uh, during the One Planet Summit last December in Paris, uh, with the support of the Global Covenant of Mayors, uh, ECLE, the C40, and with the help of other international banking institutions, we launched a worldwide call to action to develop vertically integrated NDCs investment plans for cities, to bring everyone to the table, to bring national governments, local governments, international developing banks, the private sector, to design comprehensive investment plans for climate change actions at the city level. Uh, we launched that last December. We are uh, making some progress and we have heard great news this afternoon on that. I think that those are very concrete and important steps in the right direction to ensure that cities will get the necessary resources uh, they need to uh, implement a comprehensive and effective climate change agenda in the mid and long term without depending on other factors like political uh, fa issues uh, at the local scene. Um, we also think that uh, we have to come up with emblematic projects to show that this kind of uh, investment plans would work through initiatives that might be expandable and replicable. As part of its contribution to the urban agenda, the European Investment Bank provided nearly 150 billion euros for investment in urban infrastructure and services between 2011 and 2017. This includes providing crucial support for new urban development, sustainable transport and social housing as well as improving water, energy, health and education infrastructure in cities across Europe and around the world.